And hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is Adventures in Wubu. This episode, I'm going to do another reading from the works of Stuart Wilde, because he's enjoyed the last one, and I enjoy reading Stuart Wilde's books. I will uh, say again with Stuart Wilde that he's much better at reading his own books, and he's much better at giving lectures, in my opinion, than his books. You know, his books are very good in places. His early ones, his later ones, you can take or leave. Um, his lectures and his audio tapes and stuff like that are really where you get the sense of who he is as a character and his kind of his humour and uh, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to do him justice, but I will do my best. This is again from Infinite Self. And there is a cheeky YouTube video of him reading this book on YouTube. It's, I think it's called The 33 Steps or something uh, similar. So uh, if you want to hear him read it, then you can go, but I'm going to read it. So this is step three. And it's having the courage to go beyond. Step three. Having the courage to go beyond is the act of letting go and allowing your life to enter into a spontaneous dynamic of free flow. This means less structure, more trust, believing and taking life as you find it, rather than trying to force it into a preconceived pattern and getting angry when it won't allow you to jam it into a corner in that way. The ego is naturally resistant to letting go. It wants to hold on to its sense of power and to dominate your life and the lives of others. It needs to control because it feels insecure. So it may be frightening to let go, but in my view it is more frightening to stay where you are. In the world of the ego and intellect, you don't have to develop blind trust. You can hope to rely on past experiences and think things out, and hopefully that works for you most of the time. But as a spiritual being, trust is vital. In the dynamic, exhilarating world of the infinite self, you're flying blind. It has no limits, so it's bound to carry you to unfamiliar ground. And that is what makes the whole process so fascinating. The journey from ego to spirit entails resolving the paradoxes of this human existence. I can best explain it by quoting from a little book I wrote in 1984 called Weight Loss for the Mind. We have to embrace infinity inside an immortal body. We have to believe in a God we can't see. We have to learn to love in a dimension where there's so much hatred. We have to see abundance when people, when people constantly talk of shortages and lack. We have to discover freedom where control is the state religion. We have to develop self-worth where people criticise and belittle us. We have to see beauty where there is ugliness. We have to embrace kindness and positive attitudes when surrounded by uncertainty. We have to feel safe in spite of our concerns. The crux of the matter boils down to trust. You have to have the courage to embrace an idea, accept it and believe it before you have any real proof that the energy is there for you or that, or that, or that, that idea will work. You have to let go of that bad intellectual habit that says your ego personality always knows best. By giving the infinity you, you, uh, within you credence, you empower it to come into your life. It is almost as if you have to lose yourself a little in order to find yourself again at a higher level of energy. It won't let go and tr if you won't let go and trust a little, your ego personality will constantly block off your inner power. And you will miss the benefit of the subtle awareness and extrasensory perception that you are entitled to as a spiritual being. We become used to overriding these inner messages, don't we? It's part of how the ego plays its game. The infinity within you is just like a celestial wind that will blow gently in your direction and assist you, but only when you have quieted the mind and controlled the ego. People ask me, is it intuition? Yes and no. It's more, it's more than intuition. Spontaneous intuition is how it manifests in the early stages. Later, the dialogue from the infinite self comes, from, comes through as an all-knowing, instant information derived from heightened feelings. It grows as you focus and discipline yourself, and when you know and believe that you are infinite. Once you can see the TikTok world for what it is, the power of the infinite self joins you. It teaches you hour by hour, day by day, constantly showing you the subtle nature of things in a truly magnificent way. It brings you the people you need to be associated with. It shows you how to modify your belief patterns, which of uh, your belief has and which of those beliefs you need to sling off the cart forever. It assists your well-being and shows you a way of making a living that are less onerous and restrictive. The depth of its perception carries you from one stepping stone to the next. And this is just a kind of an interjection I want to make here. I don't think he's necessarily pointing to that thing that I always give about, out about, which, you know, he may be, but I'm going to assume he's not that. Once you just show up that the universe has your back and takes over and you get suddenly get everything you ever wanted, you know, that, um, say you wanted to be an actor and you go, right, I'm going to be an actor and you declare it to the world and you step out 
and then you know you do an audition and you don't get it and there's this kind of sense of going well i did my bit i you know i did uh, i followed my bliss and you know the universe is meant to come together and make everything right for me which only leads to sadness and depression and uh, distrust of the world but i think it's just more saying that when you start doing stuff and you start trusting in yourself you know things open up not that everything becomes perfect or everything is suddenly just handed to you but you know there's a bit more of a flow to your life which i do think is true but just not to kind of fall into the trap of thinking that because you you turn up with your shiny thing whatever your shiny thing is whatever your bliss is that everything is just immediately going to fall into place because that doesn't happen not my experience anyway it's a shame if you don't listen while the ego dominates and holds on, spiritual spirituality within you backs off and waits until you're done with the mundane logic of life. So agreeing to listen is important. Acting what you hear is even more important. It doesn't matter if at first you get things a bit mixed up or if you're not sure what comes from the infinite self and what is from the mind. You have to start somewhere. That is the all-important first step. If you don't listen and open up, the world you create via your personality and its preferences and the perceptions you have of the world around you starts to dwindle in energy. You use up the power available to you. The energy of the place where you live, your circumstance, your work and the relationships you sustain all begin to drop to a lower level because no new energy flows in to sustain them. Gradually you will become less and less secure, entering into, entering into a stagnant dead zone which, in effect, the eternal manifestation of a tired and lifeless mind. Every day there is less energy than before, less excitement, more boredom and irritation. Often this diminishing effect will be suffocating, you will feel trapped, life becomes a flat line. In stagnation, danger increases. Your safety and protection are weakened by the staleness that surrounds you. Imagine the dead zone as a circular flat piece of paper. Gradually through negative emotion and the effects of restriction, the sides of the paper start to curve up. It begins to take the shape of an upside down cone. The longer you allow the dead zone around you to exist, the steeper the walls of the cone become. And the further you slip down the cone towards the inverted apex, the more you have become trapped. And that kind of, I feel, is just talking about that, like more the vortex of negative kind of stuff, or the, uh, in reality, transurfness kind of piles on, you know, this negative pile on, but you can have a positive pile on too, where it's, you know, one negative thing leads to another negative thing leads to another thing. There's like kind of that momentum that goes with it that we see mostly in that whole idea of the rich get richer, or, you know, th th that. Uh, what's the bible called the famous one like uh, like what if people who have will get more and people who have nothing will get less or you know even more will be taken away from all that kind of idea of that things seem to have a momentum in themselves energetically and that's the more you kind of sit in the kind of negativity and restriction and control and fear and all that the more of that you see till it engulfs you and it surrounds you and uh, as we all know that's very easy to um you know with it with kind of media and with the kind of surroundings that we're in particularly now a lot of fear and you know that kind of stuff around it that uh, you can become engulfed and you can't see past any of those things so just be aware of that at the bottom of the cone the intensity of your mind and the lack of energy and support and the circumstances that surround you are so great that you approach a situation of extreme rest restriction life closes in around you and sadly you may have enough energy you may not have enough energy to climb out the restriction of a lifeless situation such as this can cause disquiet may result in dis dysfunctional or reckless behaviour. It can lead eventually to hopelessness and an early death. Kind of, you know, very negative there, Stu, but, well, you know, we know what he's pointing at. Agree with yourself in a quiet moment of prayer or contemplation that you do have the courage to be different. You will change and you will fight the ego's lack of energy by embracing a few new ideas. You may get some flack from the people around you because you want to change, but so what? In a stagnant situation, anything is better than staying where we are. Next, have the courage to accept and weather the pain and aggravation that the ego will undoubtedly put, through, put you through as you try to disempower the government of your life. It's going to it's not, it, it isn't going to like what's going on. It will protest with logic and emotion and fine sounding arguments hoping to turn you around. When that happens, stiffen your resolve and perform some discipline that the ego won't like. Throw yourself in a river at 4am every morning for a week. That should fix it pronto. In conclusion, to the courage to go beyond that, I'll add the courage to be vulnerable. As you change and grow, the ego will feel assailed and threatened. If you have little or no resistance, you will be fine. If you resist and fight, it will hurt a lot. So be courageous. 
Allow yourself to become vulnerable. Put aside the macho, dogmatic, insistent psychology that most people suffer from. Enter instead into the intense spiritual beauty of moving and flowing without necessarily knowing which way to go or how you'll get there. Believe, believe, believe. So I suspect that some of you are, uh, okay, understand why I like Stuart Wilde so much because particularly in his early days, he was very positive, very upbeat, very the world is great and you know you have spiritual work and power and you know you should look after yourself and not feel bad about yourself. In fact, you should feel the opposite. He kind of does a double take in that, but towards the end, but it's, there's still kind of a, a beauty in some of his later stuff as well that, you know, like there's glimpses of the old happy Stuart and uh, I like him. I always feel that I have to kind of uh, make apologies for him. So I should stop doing that because that's what he would say that you shouldn't do. So enjoy Stuart uh, on your, on whatever level you want to take him at and uh, don't let my insistency that his doom porn <laughs> ending <laughs> should in any way mar your experience of him. He's wonderful. He's some wonderful great teachers. No, he's some mental woo-woo teachings as well that you can uh, you can accept or not accept yourself. So good people of the internet. Um, have a good day and have the courage to be yourself and have the courage to do things and have the courage to come out of the any kind of stagnancy that you have in your life and don't let the naysayers be them external forces or your own kind of inner naysayer and um, stop you from having the life that you want or pursuing the life that you want you're definitely guaranteed the pursuit of happiness whether we get the happiness is up to many other factors so may your best days be ahead and be well